Ops tent one afternoon and told that a member of the police special branch would be arriving shortly and that I should take two of my men and get ready to accompany this policeman to a place where he would be meeting an informant of his. There was apparently information that a local tribesman by the name of Chidahoy was assisting terrorists and the cops wanted to speak to him about that. About nine o'clock that night we set out first of all along a dirt road to a point where the informant was waiting and uh, there we left the road and proceeded uh, along a footpath. It was quite a, a dark night but uh, plenty of starlight to see by and uh, we walked for a couple of hours uh, in one direction and then in another direction and I eventually asked myself whether this man had perhaps got lost in the dark and I, I stopped and I called the policeman to one side and I said does your guy know where we're going he seems to be lost and uh, he spoke to the informant and there was apparently some assurance given that no we uh, we were going where we were supposed to be going and I, I should just be a little patient we will be there before long and we set off again but most Rhodesian soldiers and certainly nearly all of them at NCO level uh, know their direction at night from the stars and I could see that we were veering off in a, in a circle to the left and we had been doing that for some time and again I stopped and I said to the policeman we are going to be back at the the drag where we found your man if we continue like this we're going around in circles and uh, he again spoke to the man and again the assurance was given no we are almost there just to be a little bit more patient and so we we continued we arrived at a, a cluster of huts <clears throat> and we asked uh, the man is this where Chidawi lives and he said well he, he, it, it might be he's a little bit unsure and I said but this place is abandoned I, I, I heard no dogs barking there was no smell of wood fires the place was silent and uh, so we decided that we would go into the village and, and take a closer look. Well, it, it's always a dangerous thing to do. And one has to clear a village like this at night with a lot of, a lot of caution. I had a habit of always picking up a few stones and standing to one side and tossing these through any empty doorways that I saw. And then wait and see what the reaction is. Well, on this particular night, nothing happened. There was, there was no return fire. There was no sound of anybody inside. And we left that place and continued walking. But I was, I was really beginning to get disgruntled with the whole exercise because midnight had come and gone now and we were still apparently walking aimlessly in the bush. Um, we came to a stream. And the place was in deep shadow. You couldn't see your hand in front of your face. And I said to the policeman, what now? And he said, apparently we got across the, the stream here. I said, how are we going to do that? It's pitch black. He said, no, the man says we must just jump. I said, he's crazy. What's on the other side? Rocks, thorn bushes, what? He said, no, no, no. He says, it, it's fine. Uh, they cross here all the time. So I said, well, you better go first. And the informant did. I heard him jumping and landing on the other side. The policeman followed and then of course it was my turn I, I could not just stand there but I was worried I didn't want to break a leg you know myself or my men uh, that would be uh, that would not be on but uh, in turn we leapt over talk about having faith and uh, and then we, we continued walking this time we came to a cluster of huts and uh, this place was occupied it was quite evident Dogs started barking at our approach. You could hear people moving, even though it was in the very, very early hours of the morning. Uh, we had caused some disturbance arriving there. But we were, we were so uh, annoyed by this time uh, with the whole situation that I'm afraid that uh, the policeman didn't have much patience. He just uh, spoke aloud to the informant, asked him which hut was Chidahoy's, and we proceeded to that, uh, to that dwelling. Uh, when we got there, uh, the informant was told, call the man out. And he mumbled something and that got the policeman even more upset. And he took over himself there and started banging on the door. 
and this creaked open and in the starlight I could see an old man standing there and the policeman addressed him are you alone he said yes there's nobody here except myself he said you know a man called Chidawai he said yeah I know Chidawai very well he said where is Chidawai so he said sir he's he's standing right next to you and we were all taken aback at this the policeman especially and uh, he said can you please explain yourself and uh, he said the man who brought you here the one who's standing next to you he's Chidawai he's my son but uh, sir you must understand that he is <clears throat> he's not he's not well and he does many strange things and lately he has started bringing the police here and now tonight I see he's brought the army I'm very sorry but uh, we try and keep an eye on him but he slips away when we when we when we don't notice this well the policeman was very annoyed he had a, a browning automatic shotgun with him and I saw him raise it uh, in the night and I thought oh he's gonna blow poor Chidaway away but uh, <laughs> luckily he didn't he brought the barrel down on the shoulders of this poor man Pow! <clears throat> and he said are you Chidaway Pow! <laughs> and Chidaway was yelping and dancing around and the old man put his arms around him and said please sir, please he's, he can't help it he really can't help it I'll try and keep him under control and so we left there to go back to the base camp <laughs> and I was chuckling all the way at this fiasco and I wondered how many people Chidoi had led astray already on these wild goose chases and we got back to to the platoon base camp and of course we had to wash off all this this horrible camo cream and it was always a, an unpleasant task but uh, it, it, it was a good laugh it was really a good laugh amidst the or everything else that was going on in that war Chidaoi Zakaipa <laughs> iwe Aiwa Aiwa Aiwa